What is net neutrality? Net neutrality is the equal treatment of all data, just like these data packets. Net neutrality means that users like us should decide which devices, software, services and websites are used. Indifferent. Net usage should be open and without any third party telling us what will and won't work. Why should you care? Because it is an awesome thing from which you benefit every day and because this awesome thing is currently endangered. A neutral network shows no discrimination towards the sender, content or receiver of sent data packets. It doesn't make any difference which rate the sender and receiver are paying or what kind of application or protocol sends or receives the packet. Or in simpler terms, imagine the web as a road on which data packets are moving. This road connects all computers that are connected to the internet. On the crossroads of these streets are routers, which direct the data packets on the right route to their destination. The routers don't care who comes down the road, nor do they care how they look, where they are from, where they want to go, or what content they have with them. This way, I can communicate directly with my friends, even if they're living on a different continent, pay different rates, or have a different provider than me. I can access the internet to visit any website or play any game, no matter who is offering them or where the hosting servers are located. I can watch any video or read blogs from all over the world, and I can take part in initiatives and open source projects. I can do all this whether I'm using a tablet, laptop, PC, or mobile device to access the internet. This is what the internet is all about. This is the way we expect it to work. We all benefit, as a community, from these neutral communication networks. They guarantee our access to all available content on the World Wide Web. Because of this system, the network providers have earned billions in the last several years. Net neutrality, an awesome idea for all of us. So, what is the catch? The telecommunication providers now make the claim that these imaginary data roads could experience traffic jams. They want to abolish the concept of net neutrality. Of course, this isn't true. Data networks are not real roads. As we know from the hardware manufacturers of the network infrastructure, there is in fact enormous untapped capacity in the network. Not to mention, operators of content distribution networks tell us that data traffic is unbelievably cheap. Why are telecommunication companies making these claims? For years, our connection providers have been jealously looking at the biggest profit centers of the internet's service providers. Content providers, search engines, video platforms, and social networks. They all want their share of these profits as the digital age reduces traditional revenue streams. Now they want not only to transport data, they also want to exert power and control on whatever is offered. So, how do they want to do that? To achieve this, the telecommunication providers have considered splitting the data into categories, or rather, casts. The lowest cast of this system would be the regular internet which would only be available for a limited amount of data and would have to take a back seat to higher casts when being sent through the data network. The highest cast contains content from the net provider, segregated from the internet, and would receive preferential treatment and unlimited access, naturally, all through an extra subscription. Between these two, many other priority levels are possible. For example, a cast for data from social networks that raises a traffic data toll for the social network provider. This, of course, means that the receiver will have to pay for an extra subscription as well. In the same manner, an extra service to provide games for consoles or reading online newspapers could be implemented. They would be separate from the internet, and both the distributor of the service and their customers could be charged for it. Competitive offers would be restricted or blocked. So, how does this work? Let us go back to imagining the data network as roads. The router, which originally directed data to the right route, would be upgraded with toll stations that scan through the data packets and separate them by casts. Depending on the cast, the data packets could use a special road that was separated from the main road in order to reach their destination faster. However, if the toll was paid for data of a lower cast, they would have to use the slower, regular road. If no payment for the data was made by the sender, it would be assigned to a lower cast and would only be allowed to use the street if it was empty and not too many data packets had passed through the toll station. Should the data packets be part of programs, services, content or senders that were not liked by the telecommunication provider, they would be slowed down excessively, sorted through and possibly even destroyed. Moreover, if this was not clear, we customers do always pay 
no matter if a service provider pays toll as a sender or not. Therefore, our data traffic might get limited and we would have to pay for more data traffic subscriptions. So, what does this mean? Non-commercial services and community projects, like Wikipedia for example, could not afford this cast toll and would have limited availability or not be available at all. Direct communication with friends and acquaintances could be filtered or blocked as a rival to established models of service and commerce. Once such a control and filter infrastructure is introduced and established, filtering and discarding of unwelcome data like competitive offers or services could be done easily. Filtering opinions, information or political viewpoints is just a small change in the system settings. What if we let infringement of net neutrality happen? Such a process is very difficult to reverse, if it's possible at all. We would lose the richness of the internet, the variety of options through which we shape the net. We would lose much content, because providers cannot afford the toll of the telecommunication enterprise anymore. We would lose the free competition, and by this, the release of new services of smaller companies or community projects. The free access to content and information that we currently enjoy would be gone. There would be a two, three, or four class model of the internet, or even, not just one internet, but many, and different content would be available in different nets. Think of it like a set of TV channels from a pay TV provider, where in addition to basic programs, there are premium programs that are charged differently depending on the channel. You could only access whatever the providers offered and expected to be profitable. The network operator's regime would severely limit today's freedom of information on the internet, and for this loss, we would have to pay more. However, our providers say that they would never do such a thing. It is just something like a rise in price. But of course, the telecommunication providers have been proven to lie right to our faces when making arguments against net neutrality. For example, the claim of non-available capacity, or that countries with laws for net neutrality would have a slower internet connection. If they're already lying at this point, why would they tell the truth by promising to build a faster net with the additional money, while claiming they will not sift through our data, even though they need it in order to make the cast system work? How can they possibly keep the richness and the competition with such a system. Therefore, protest with us. Request statutory regulations for net neutrality in your country and in the EU. Demand equal treatment of data. Reject preferential treatment of premium data in exchange for a worse treatment of your personal data. Stand up against network locks and an artificial deceleration. Fight for a free and open communication network which we together as a community benefit from. Demand non-manipulated data traffic. Reject the discrimination or prioritizing of data, no matter what the reason. Nobody has the right to be snooping in our traffic. Nothing justifies it. We are all entitled to net neutrality, even in mobile networks. Real net, now and in future.